What's up guys, registered dietitian Kara Corey here. Welcome back for another video. If you guys are not new here, then welcome back. And if you are new here, then thank you for joining. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you wanna stay tuned for all my upcoming videos. I do a lot of fitness, nutrition content, on the tubes, sprinkled in with some fitness fashion hauls for you guys. As evidenced by the thumbnail, today we're gonna talk about the world's best diet. And what made me wanna come up with talking about this video for you guys, I do enjoy Today's Dietitian. That's a magazine for registered dietitians or anyone who's really interested in nutrition can check it out. I don't physically get the magazine anymore, but I do go online. They have monthly articles and it's just a really good resource. So I just wanna share that with you guys. If you're into nutrition, that's a good resource for you. They do a lot of articles that are all backed by scientific evidence and research. They always cite all the journals that they utilize for their articles. So just give you that little bit of background so you kind of know when I share this information, it comes from a scientific evidence-based place. So before we dive right into what is the best diet in the world, I think most people will agree, and maybe you've heard it before, but the best diet is going to be the one that you can actually stick with, right? It shouldn't be something that has to fit into a tiny little perfect box with lots of restrictions and things eliminated from it. It should truly be more of a lifestyle for you, something that you do with ease on a day-to-day -day basis. However, there are certain diets out there that have been studied based on their health benefits, based on their ability to assist people to lose weight. And the US News and World went ahead and ranked their top diets. They went um, according to best overall diet, best diet for weight loss, etc. So this report came out this year and they ranked the number one best diet overall as the Mediterranean diet. Also, make sure you guys stick around because at the end of my little chitty chat, I'm going to make for you a super easy Mediterranean dish, something you could incorporate in your diet if you do want to look to add in more Mediterranean type foods. How this group of people came to conclude which diets were the best, they got a panel of experts together, around 40, experts in the field to help determine and rank different diets. And they had different criteria that they had to look at. They reviewed all the current research that's out there. What I thought's cool too is they also went ahead and omitted people that seemed to already have a bias towards certain diets. If there was something there, they would om omit them from the actual rankings. Um, so they went ahead and looked at the diet that found um, in terms of what ranked best overall, what that entails was really looking at what was easy and practical for people to follow. So nothing too complex. Anyone can really follow it from your brother or sister to your grandmother. They looked at ensuring its safety, that it wasn't going to compromise your health. Uh, they looked at making sure it was nutritious and they also looked at seeing how it impacted your health for the long term. Let's jump into what the Mediterranean diet really is before we talk about its health benefits in case you're not familiar with it. The Mediterranean diet, um, while it's called a diet, it truly is a lifestyle and it can vary a little bit based on the region that folks live in, but it truly is a way a whole way of life and there actually is a Mediterranean diet food guide pyramid that you can look at and utilize as well that kind of nicely summarizes the basic principles of this diet. I really like what this diet, if we're gonna call it a diet lifestyle, it just makes it easier for video purposes as you guys know to, to label it, but it really has a lot of great principles and some of them may vary from what you are used to or what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. So to review that, when you look at the Mediterranean Food Guide Pyramid, the basis of the pyramid, I really like the fact that it incorporates physical activity. It's a lifestyle where you need to be physically active 
every day, whether it's just parking your car further away or taking the stairs versus the elevator. It's got that nice reminder built in there that we need to get off our butt and move. It doesn't mean you have to be Mr. or Mrs. Olympia and be training in the gym three hours a day. It just is that nice reminder that we need to be more active every single day of our lives. With that part of the pyramid, it also encompasses social and social connections, which I do think is really important in terms of our health and our mortality um, in our lifespan. So it kind of involves that to remind you to be social, to network with other people, to eat with your family and friends. That's that's a big thing with the Mediterranean lifestyle um, is eating with all your family and friends and having that social experience. Next, moving up the pyramid, getting into the food, it's really a large emphasis of basing all of your meals around a very high quantity of fruits and vegetables. So in Greece, the average amount of fruits and vegetables consumed is nine servings a day of antioxidant-rich fruits and vegetables. And I'm gonna be honest, I definitely do not get nine servings a day total. It's something that I always work towards getting more of, but nine is just like, that's a lot. That's a lot when you think about the average person and what we consume here in the U.S. So they base a big part of their meals around fruits and vegetables. They get whole grains. Uh, they do more plant-based sources of protein. So really high uh, volume of beans, seeds, legumes, and nuts. So that's going to be the majority of your meals on a day-to-day -day basis. Moving up the pyramid, we've got consuming fish and poultry a couple times a week. And when we think about meats, meats and sweets, my favorite, it's near and dear to my heart, they really limit consumption of meats and sweets. So red meat, for instance, is typically not consumed more than three times a month. Sweets, they're looked at as a treat. And if you're someone that's used to having a treat maybe every day, maybe after every meal even, in the Mediterranean lifestyle, they don't do that. A treat, a sweet is really a treat. So it's a very once in a while occasion, maybe a couple times a month, they're enjoying something sweet. So it's really kind of a different way of looking at things. In terms of the fat, which is really what separates the Mediterranean diet, it's really what um, we'll get into with a lot of the health benefits as well, they really replace any butter that they would have in their diet, whether it be with cooking or adding it to their food, they replace that with the addition of olive oil and sometimes canola oil, which are a monounsaturated fat. So the Mediterranean diet sometimes is a bit more higher in fat. However, it's higher in that heart healthy monounsaturated fat and it's very low in saturated fats. The other honorable mentions from their food guide pyramid on the side of the pyramid, it emphasizes water every single day. Have you guys drink your water today? Make sure you drink enough. That's a big part of this. And I like that that's incorporated right on their pyramid. And then the other thing that I also really do like is that they incorporate red wine in moderation. So what does that mean for us winos out there who maybe like to drink an entire bottle of wine? That's not it. They are talking about for women, a five ounce glass of red wine daily, which if you think about five ounces, it's, it's a very small amount. It's your standard uh, portion of wine. If you go out to a restaurant, they portion it for you perfect. And for men, it's about 10 ounces. So it's double the amount. So that is also part of their whole eating pattern, if you will. And I just wanna mention, I really like that. I think just I'm tangenting here, but as a whole, um, I like that the nutrition field or research in general, that we're not focusing so much on like specific nutrients. Uh, focusing, we're focusing more now on an actual eating pattern and what eating patterns really do help us lead the healthiest lifestyles and really prevent disease long term. And I think that's really important because the average person that I deal with um, in terms of clients reaching out to me, we get very bogged down with specific nutrients and you know thinking we just need to eat a high protein diet or thinking we need to eat a high fat diet and not really thinking about all the other variables that play into it and with everything i just mentioned here for mediterranean it truly is an entire lifestyle and eating pattern if you will that 
everything kind of works synergistically together to help you work a healthier lifestyle. So it's not just one thing. It's not just the protein, it's not the fats, not the carbs. It's everything together, how we're making choices within those food groups, how we're living on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's really what impacts our health long-term. So with all that said, I think a lot of people may be like, well, how do I make that practical and how do I implement that on a day-to-day -day basis, especially if I'm someone that does want to lose weight and better my health? And I think the, your best bet is always going to be to work with a registered dietitian. They can assist you with kind of setting you up for how to implement some of these guidelines within your life and, and help out in terms of portion sizes. So um, if you are more focused on weight loss, the Mediterranean diet wasn't ranked number one for weight loss. It was actually Weight Watchers that's still a really supported diet out there, which Weight Watchers varies from Mediterranean, obviously, because that includes the tracking component. So talking about a Mediterranean lifestyle, it's not like you have to track your macros. They, they're not tracking their macros in Greece. Maybe some people are, but the general lifestyle of it in order to have those health benefits doesn't require you to track and use MyFitnessPal and weigh your food. Weight Watchers is a bit more structured in that you take accountability with portion sizes and tracking and things of that nature. So I would say that's why it ranked higher for weight loss, but it's not to say that implementing the Mediterranean principles could not assist you in weight loss if that is something that you're working towards. So just be mindful of that, but if you don't want to track and don't want to get bogged down with all that, I think just implementing some of these principles can be very helpful for you in terms of your health. And I want to review a few of the reasons why, um, specifically some of the, the research that came out. Um, there's just tons and tons of studies that back the Mediterranean diet. I've been out of school now for gonna age myself, but I've been a registered dietitian for over 10 years now. And even when I went through college, the Mediterranean diet had supportive research out there for it being a healthy diet to follow. Um, I do want to mention the DASH diet has typically been number one ranked for the best overall diet. That's dietary approaches to stopping hypertension. And there are some similar like parallels there with just overall healthy eating that the Mediterranean includes but this year the Mediterranean took number one. There's loads of research out there with large studies. The Women's Health Study is one of them that looked at like over 25,000 healthy women to assess their health in terms of following a Mediterranean diet and their risk for cardiovascular diseases. And what they found was those that followed a Mediterranean type diet had 25% decrease risk for cardiovascular disease. And that's huge. 25% is a very large percentage to decrease your risk by. Where the risk decrease comes from when following the Mediterranean type diet was really they looked at inflammatory markers, which inflammation is a huge hot topic that I think we see a lot now. Um, talked about more and researched more and how to just decrease our inflammation in our body. They also looked at blood sugar control as a measure in addition to BMI, which is the body mass index, which I know can be controversial for some people. I just like to mention that it's not an end-all be-all, but it does basically measure your height to your, your weight. Um, and that's all it takes into account. But it is one area you can use to kind of assess trends with BMI. So while it's not the best indicator of health per se, it is something we can use to um, assess how well a diet's working or not working. So the Mediterranean diet has been really, really helpful in terms of preventing heart disease of any kind, heart disease, cardiovascular disease, as well as diabetes. Um, going back to the topic of olive oil real quick, because I think we've all been in a, a coconut oil rage, if you will, for the past few years. And I think 
thinking about the differences with olive oil and what that can provide for your body. So with olive oil being a mono unsaturated fat, very low in saturated fat, that is going to assist with a decrease in LDL cholesterol, which is the bad cholesterol that we don't want to have a lot of within our bodies. So you're always going to produce cholesterol on your own. So some people may genetically be over producers and that's where you can get a higher LDL from, but there's other factors there that play into that cholesterol being high and one of them is our diet. So if you're someone that has high LDL or high cholesterol, you know, it's funny cuz in the hospital I still see it treated with low fat diets and that's that's not necessarily what you want to do cuz you don't want to decrease the fat across the board. What you want to do is increase the heart healthy fats because research has shown that the addition of olive oil can reduce that LDL and Every couple of teaspoons that you increase consumption of can further reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease. So it's, it's really quite evident that this is something that can be helpful for folks who have issues with cholesterol. And just as an aside for anyone that may ask, extra virgin or virgin olive oil. So the extra virgin does have a lot less processing to it, which allows it to have higher levels of those plant compounds that are pro found to act protective within our bodies, basically as an antioxidant and protect our cells from damage and inflammation. So definitely uh, hit up the grocery store this week, add that to your list if you're someone that wants to focus a little bit more on your cardiovascular disease risk. So just in general, those who are following more of a Mediterranean type diet, when studied, they found that they did have a significantly lower risk of developing diabetes. And they also found with folks who already do have a diagnosis of diabetes, those that incorporated the Mediterranean diet in particular, getting in that olive oil actually did help with their blood sugar control and management and increasing the olive oil in the diet, they saw a correlation with a reduction in their hemoglobin A1C, which for those of you that don't know, the hemoglobin A1C is just, it's part of the lab work that's drawn to assess your glucose control over a three month period. So instead of just going into the doctor's office one day, having a good uh, blood sugar, cause it's just a one snapshot in time, that three month span kind of gives you that average for what your blood sugars have been running. So for anyone who follows the channel that does have diabetes, that might be something you want to either speak with your doctor, registered dietitian with, and incorporate more of into your diet to see if it impacts your blood sugar control. Those are the main highlights of the Mediterranean diet. As a registered dietitian, I am a huge proponent of this diet, or if clients want to work on implementing that, that's something that I am here to advocate for. I really do think the research shows how it can be beneficial towards our health, and that's just what I'm all about, focusing more on our health, thinking about what's good for our internal body, decreasing that inflammation, and living happier, longer lives. Instead of focusing so much on aesthetics and what gets us skinny and what gets us looking ripped and toned, I mean, you can do that too, but let's not lose sight of what is good for our health and what makes us feel good on a day-to-day -day basis. So with that all said, I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you have questions below about the diet, let me know. And we're gonna get into a little recipe because I'm going to start incorporating some more uh, olive oil into my diet right now. Fo fo fucking instead of just fucking. <laughs> Add that to the bloopers. <laughs> I mean that fucking helps too. Live long lives. <laughs> Let's get on that. Oh man, I got booty on my mind. 